Hey students, I hope you are fine and doing great. I am here with another video. As I told you yesterday that I have organized these videos for those students who are preparing for their exams. So after the session of nouns, now it's turn for pronouns. So without further ado, let's get started. A pronoun is a word that is used in place of a specific noun or noun phrase mentioned earlier in a sentence to avoid the repetition of that particular noun or noun phrase. Simply, it is used instead of nouns. For example, he, she, it, I, you, we, they, me, her, us, etc. Now examples in the form of sentences are here. Ali and Aslam went outside to play. Ali and Aslam wanted to be the winners. Now the repetition of Ali and Aslam in the, both the sentences doesn't give a good impression. Let's have a look on the other example. Haris is a good boy. He gets up early in the morning. Instead of Haris, I have used he. Aisha is an intelligent girl. She obeys her parents and teachers. She is known for her good behavior. Now, instead of Aisha, she is used in the rest of the sentences that give a good impression. Next example is, the coach selected several key points. He wanted the team to memorize them. For the coach, he is used and for points, them is used. Now, I'll discuss about the antecedent and referent cases. The word or phrase that a pronoun replaces is called the antecedent or antecedent of the pronoun. In the previous example, the coach is the antecedent and the pronoun he is the referent because it refers back to the original noun. The antecedent and the pronoun must agree in terms of numbers and genders. I'll explain you how. Let's have a look on the previous example again. The coach selected several key points. He wanted the team to memorize them. The coach is the noun and it is considered as antecedent. And he is used for the coach. So it's a referent or a pronoun. Points is an antecedent here. And for points them is used as a referent well in the definition it is discussed that the antecedent and the pronoun must agree in terms of numbers and genders let's see how the coach is a singular noun and it's masculine so for masculine noun i have used he so in this case it agrees to the gender then points is a plural noun and for plural noun them is used as a pronoun so in this case it agrees with the numbers another example is here Saima walked to the park she enjoyed jumping on the trampoline Saima is used as antecedent it's a noun and for this particular noun it's related it's referent pronoun she is used then we have types of pronouns. There are different types of pronouns. Personal pronouns, possessive pronouns, reflexive pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, interrogative or interrogative pronouns, distributive pronouns, indefinite pronouns, relative pronouns. The pronouns that are associated with a certain person, thing or group is known as personal pronoun. For example, I, you, he, him, she, her, it, we, us, they, them. Now it's time for types of personal pronouns. We have further different types of pronouns the very first one is persons 
then second number is genders and then the third number is cases first of all we will go for the persons we have three person pronouns the very first person pronouns are the one speaking for example i me mine we us ours the person who is actually speaking is considered as the first person and he or she use i for him or herself for example i am waiting for the teacher here i is the first person pronoun they are talking to us here us is considered as first person pronoun this book is mine here mine is considered as the first person pronoun then next is second person pronoun the one spoken to is known as second person pronouns for example you and yours you are my dear friend i am planning to meet you this phone must be yours here the underlined words are considered as second person pronouns then the next is third person pronouns the ones spoken about are known as third person pronouns he him she her hers it they them theirs for example he is an interesting boy she must be she must learn ethics they are talking to them here the underlined words are considered as third person pronouns the next we have four genders the very first one is masculine gender that is he him his for example everybody enjoys messi's game when he gets the ball for messi we have used he here as a personal pronoun then next we have feminine pronouns she her and hers amina is a lady and she sent a box to her for amina i have used she here and then her is again used for a feminine next we have neuter pronouns that is it for example cat loves milk it is crazy about it so the underlined words are considered as neuter pronouns then next we have common pronouns they them theirs for example the students were in the class they had their lessons they is used for the students then further we have three cases of pronouns the subjective case objective case and possessive case subjective case are i you he she it they a pronoun is subjective when it is used as a subject of a sentence when we write the particular pronouns at the place of the subject while writing a sentence these pronouns are considered as subjective pronouns or the, those pronouns are in the subjective case let's have a look on the examples i am answering the question i is used in the place of subject you are not attentive here you is at the place of subject she is a good student it is a good book they need a break all the pronouns here are used in the place of subject then next is objective pronouns me you him her it us them his a pronoun is an objective case when it is used as a direct object an indirect object 
or an object of a preposition. When we place certain pronouns at the place of object soon after the verb, they are considered as objective pronouns or after the prepositions, if we use them, they are also in the place of objective case or if they are indirect object, they also are considered as objective pronouns. Let's have a look on the examples. They are waiting for me. In the previous example, we have discussed about they. They is still in the place of subject. But here we are concerned with the objective pronouns. So just focus on it. Me is used in the place of object of preposition. He wants to talk to you. Again, you is in the place of object of the preposition. We are calling him. It's directly at the place of object, him. We gave her a present. Now, here is the direct object. And when we talk about the present, then it's a, another case that is indirect object. I want to get it done. Mr. Robert called us at the party. Here, us is considered as objective pronoun. The teacher should talk to them about that matter. Here, them is used as the object of preposition. So, all the underlined pronouns are considered as objective pronouns. Then next we have possessive case. Possessive means possession. Mine, yours, his, hers, ours, its. A pronoun is in possessive case when it is used to show the ownership of an object. For example, these books are yours and mine. Here yours and mine are considered as possessive pronouns. They are used for showing the possession of the books. Their dog is black and ours is brown. Again, the underlined pronoun is showing the possession. The phone is mine but the ring is hers. Hers is underlined and it is a possessive pronoun. Pronoun. A pronoun that is used to express ownership or possession is known as a possessive pronoun. For example, my dream is bigger than hers. In this example, hers is the possessive pronoun. This is Tom's home and that is ours. In this example, ours is the possessive pronoun. Now we have list of possessive pronouns. There are a bunch of different possessive pronouns that you can use which can be either singular or plural if they are referring to one person or multiple people. If you are using any particular pronoun for a single person or thing, it is known as singular possessive pronoun. And if you are using any personal, any possessive pronoun for multiple people or thing, it is your Plural possessive pronoun. First of all, we will discuss about singular possessive pronouns. Let us go for the definition. The pronouns are singular if they only refer to one person or thing. These include mine, yours, hers, his. Just try to make sentences of these given pronouns and you will be able to learn about the singular possessive pronouns. For example, this book is mine, that book is yours, that book is hers, this book is his. So, in these all examples, these singular possessive pronouns are used. Plural possessive pronoun, the pronouns are plural if it refers to more than one person or thing. These include ours, yours theirs. Now again we will use them in the sentences. For example, these books are ours, those books are yours, these books are theirs. In these particular examples, they are referring to the plural people or things. Now there are two important points related to possessive pronouns. The very first one is every personal pronoun has a possessive pronoun. As we have already discussed in the previous video, 
and possessive pronouns do not take apostrophes for example it's yours without an apostrophe and not yours with apostrophe this is the wrong one theirs is correct but with apostrophe it is wrong now i would like to discuss the difference between possessive pronouns and possessive adjectives although this is not the topic of adjectives but i just want to discuss it here just for the understanding of the students because students get confused with the possessive determiners the possessive adjectives and they also consider them that they are also possessive pronouns possessive adjectives are the possessive cases but not actually possessive pronouns let's have a look on the given chart possessive adjectives and possessive determiners are at one side and on the other side you have possessive pronouns let's go for the formula of possessive adjectives when we use possessive adjectives soon after them we use nouns so in this case they describe the particular noun and possessive pronouns are used instead of nouns and we do not use any noun after that for example my most of the students consider it as a pronoun but this is actually possessive adjective we will also discuss this topic in our adjectives portion but now the difference between the two must be understood this is my book now my and book as i have told you that we cannot use noun and pronoun together soon after one another so in this case my is an adjective and it is modifying the book on the other hand this book is mine so mine is your pronoun here your is adjective plus pronoun sorry yours is pronoun is this your umbrella so your is specifically used for umbrella you are pointing towards umbrella so it's adjective here and for pronoun is this yours his he lent me his jacket so his after his we have used noun so here it is functioning as possessive adjective or determiner this isn't my jacket it's his now it's you can use any of the noun here it's uh, it is for it, it belongs to sami so you can replace it with his her i borrowed her car so in this case her is possessive adjective this car is hers and here it is pronoun do you like my doll these are its clothes so it is used as an adjective and its we avoid using alone as a possessive pronoun because after its we always use a noun our a lot of our friends came to our party now in this sentence we have used our for twice for friends and for party so in these both the cases it is possessive adjective on the other hand the, that car is ours so here it is pronoun their house is lovely so this is adjective that house is theirs so here it is pronoun reflexive pronouns are those pronouns which refer to the subjects of the sentences or in other words the subject and object of the sentence are the same person or thing formation of reflexive pronoun these pronouns are made by adding self or selves to the possessive adjectives or object pronouns for example with the help of possessive adjectives we can make reflexive pronouns with my we can make myself your yourself or yourselves our ourselves her herself object pronoun with the help of object pronoun we make reflexive pronouns for example him himself it itself them themselves let's have a look on the examples you should inform the principal yourself here this yourself is a reflexive pronoun and it refers back to the subject that is you here subject can be a noun or a pronoun another example is they are helping themselves 
again themselves is acting as a reflexive pronoun and it refers back to the subject that is they. I went to the office myself. The computer restarts itself. He was cleaning his room by himself, etc. These are the examples that refer back to the subjects and these are the examples of reflexive pronouns. It's very easy to analyze reflexive pronouns within any piece of writing because it is with the self and selves and it is very easy to analyze. Now let's have a look on the difference between self and selves. Self is used for singulars, for example, herself, myself, himself, itself, yourself. While on the other hand, selves is used for plurals, for example, themselves, ourselves, yourselves. Now next is intensive, emphatic and emphasizing pronouns. These pronouns add emphasis on the subject, noun or pronoun, but do not act as an object. They appear right after the subject to put stress over it. While reflexive pronouns do not put stress and they were the objects, they are the objects or they are the objects of preposition. But it's not the case with the intensive pronouns. For example, I myself will call her. Here, myself is used to put stress on the subject. Asif himself was not willing to attend the party. They themselves offered us the lunch. The teacher herself checked the papers. The doctor herself prescribed the medicine. In all these examples, these intensive pronouns are used to put stress on the subject. Now let's have a look on the difference of reflexive and intensive pronouns. How do we differentiate between the two? When it comes to reflexive pronoun, it changes the meaning of a sentence. When we use it in a sentence, it changes the meaning of a sentence. It is necessary for a sentence. Well, when we are supposed to use it, then it is a compuls compulsory part. It is an essential part to use in a sentence. It is used to reflect back to the subject. For example, she bought herself a shirt. While on the other hand, she bought a shirt. Here, in the first example, herself is referring back to the subject like she has bought that particular shirt for her own self. But on the other hand, she bought a shirt, so that shirt might be for anyone. Now, when it comes to intensive pronouns, it does not change the meaning of a sentence. It means that if we use intensive pronouns in the sentences, if we do not use intensive pronouns in our writings, it doesn't matter. The meaning is not changed. It is not necessary for a sentence. Same if we use, if we do not use, it's not necessary. And the last is, it is used to put emphasis on the subject. For example, the teacher herself taught the class. The teacher taught the class. Both the examples have same meaning. In the earlier example, the teacher herself means we are just putting stress on the subject and she has taught the class. And the other sentence meaning is totally same. So the use of intensive pronoun does not affect the meaning of the sentence. But when we talk about reflexive pronouns, they do change the meaning of a sentence. Demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns are those pronouns which refer to or point out to objects. The word demonstration means show clearly. For example, this, that, these, those. It is used to show that an object is either near or far. Let me explain. Demonstratives, this, that, these, those are called demonstratives and they are used to show the relative distance between the speaker and the noun. We use this as singular and these as plural to refer to something that is here or near. We use that as singular and those as plural to refer to something that is there or far. A bit more explanation is there. This is singular used for here. These is plural used for here. That is singular used for and those is plural for there. Let's have a look on a few examples for further details.
This is an apple. It is near to the speaker or near to the person who is speaking. That is an apple. The object is far from the speaker. These are apples. These is used as plurals. And those is also a plural. And those are apples. Apples are far from the speaker. Let's have another example of demonstrative pronouns. This is a book near to the speaker. These are books, plural and near to the speaker. That is a book far from the speaker and singular. Those are books far from the speaker and plural. A few more examples are there. This is the book I received as a gift. These are the books we bought yesterday. This is the drawing my sister liked. Those are beautiful dresses. These are, are the examples of demonstratives or demonstrative pronouns. This and that are considered as singular pronouns. So we take singular verbs with them. For example, this is a bat. So I have used is here. That is a board. So, with singular pronouns, we use singular verbs. Interrogative pronouns or interrogative pronouns, both the pronunciations are correct. Those pronouns that help to ask questions are known as interrogative pronouns. WH words are called interrogative pronouns normally, but not all. Some of them are interrogative adverbs. For example, the interrogative pronouns are who, whom, whose, what, which, or whatever, whichever, whoever. The function of interrogative pronoun is that it is a great way to start conversation, gather information, and learn more about the world around us. We ask questions from different people because we want to start conversation, or we want to gather information, or we want to learn more. So, for this purpose, we use interrogative pronouns and then in the answer, we get a single noun at the place of that particular pronoun. Let's have a look on the examples. For example, who is your friend? Now, here who is functioning as interrogative pronoun because a noun will replace this pronoun. For example, you can take name of your friend, Dash is my friend. So, who is replaced with the noun or noun will replace this who. Whose book is this? So, definitely your answer will be the name of any person. Which color do you like? So, your answer might be blue, red, green. So, the color, the name of the color will replace this word which. That is interrogative pronoun. Where are you from? You will definitely Take the name of any particular area, country, city. So, that particular noun will replace this interrogative pronoun where. What is that? So, your answer may might be anything. Book, hat, pen. So, all these nouns will replace the interrogative pronouns. So, particularly the given pronouns are used for specific nouns. For example, who will answer you the question person. Whom, the answer will be in the form of person. Whose, the answer again will be in the form of person. Possessive, what will answer you about the thing and which. In the answer of which you will again tell the name of any particular person or thing. Distributive pronouns. Distributive pronouns are the pronouns that describe a member of a group, person or thing separately and not collectively. We use distributive pronouns when we refer to a single individual of a particular sentence. Distributive pronoun is always singular and as such it should be followed by a singular noun and verb. There are three distributive pronouns, each, either or either, neither or neither. Both the pronunciations are correct. Let's have a look on examples. Each of the girls 
got a medal. Each of the boys is ready for the competition. The men received each a reward. Each means every individual of a group. Whatever the number of individuals are there in a particular writing or particular sentence, we have to consider each and every of that particular writing. Then next we have either or either. Either of the students gets the reward. Either of you has to come to the party. Either means one or other of the two. We have two individuals and when we are supposed to refer to only one of that particular group. Next we have neither or neither. Neither of the newspapers is English. Neither of the students gets the reward. Neither means not one or the other of two. Means nobody, no individual, none of them. Always remember that neither and either are used for two individuals. Neither is the opposite of either. When we use either, it means that any single of two persons and when we talk about neither, it means nobody of that particular group. Next we have reciprocal pronouns. Reciprocal pronouns are used when two or more subjects that might be people or things are performing same action and experiencing same consequences. There are two reciprocal pronouns, each other, one another. When we are supposed to refer to two people, we normally use each other. And to refer to more than two people, we normally use one another. It will be clear with the help of examples. They helped each other. Each other here means that there are two individuals and we have used they as a pronoun for them. We talked to each other. They hate one another. It means more than two individuals are there. The gangsters were fighting one another. Alternate pronouns are used when you need to refer to a person or thing that does not need to be specifically identified. Let me explain a bit more. Indefinite pronouns do not refer to any particular person, place or thing. They give us a general idea of people, places or things. Indefinite pronouns are the pronouns that are not clear and they are not used to specify particular nouns. For example, we have one word indefinite pronouns and two word indefinite pronouns. Let's have a look on one word indefinite pronouns. They are each, all, both, any, one, ones, none, few, either, many, some, most, much, several, more, fewer, enough, others. I will give you examples of all these pronouns to understand clearly. Now it's turn for two word indefinite pronouns. Somebody, someone, somewhere, nobody, nowhere, nothing, anybody, anyone, anything, anywhere, whoever, everything, everybody, everywhere. Indefinite pronouns can be singular, plural or singular, plural, both. First of all, I'll discuss singular indefinite pronouns. Everybody, everyone, somebody, someone, anybody, anyone, nobody, no one, everything, something, anything, nothing, other, little, another, much, one, either, neither, each, enough. For persons, we use everybody, somebody, anybody and nobody in informal ways. When we are supposed to use these pronouns informally with our friends, with our siblings, with our relatives. So, we go for this, these indefinite pronouns. 
but when we talk formally we use everyone someone anyone no one for objects or things we use everything something anything nothing now we'll go for the examples of singular indefinite pronouns something is better than nothing this something has replaced any noun here is there anything in the bag now anything is used as indefinite pronouns you can replace it with any single noun there is nothing here everyone everybody wants to become great why i have written everybody every one both here because i have already explained you that it can be used formally it cannot be used formally everyone if you are using it is used formally while you are speaking or talking to anyone who is not from your friend circles and if you talk everybody or anybody it means that you are talking informally with your siblings or with your friends or relatives someone somebody is sleeping anyone anybody can apply for this job no one nobody wants to work everything is possible all the underlined indefinite pronouns can be replaced with the nouns i have used singular verbs with these singular indefinite pronouns so subject verb agreement is also a bit explained in this video then enough is enough she is my sister other is my friend here these enough and under other underlined indefinite pronouns are again used as indefinite pronouns each was having different opinion either has money neither is my friend can one work here little was disclosed to them less is sometimes more much has happened last year all these indefinite pronouns have singular verbs with them and we can relate them to the previous earlier writings and when we relate the previous nouns we use these pronouns instead of the nouns one more example i don't need another now you can replace this another with the noun now it's turn for plural indefinite pronouns plural indefinite pronouns have both few fewer many several others as they are plural indefinite pronouns so definitely we will take plural verbs with them both are intelligent both is plural indefinite pronoun are is plural verb and here subject verb ag ag agreement is also explained few were selected few is an indefinite pronoun we are not specifying any particular noun here fewer are smoking these days many are absent from the class several are absent today others were not allowed within these indefinite pronouns we have mostly different adjectives also here but we will discuss those adjectives in the adjectives lesson next we have singular and plural both those indefinite pronouns that are singular that are plural we can consider them both so here are they some any none all most more let's have a look on example some is yet to be done some have not submitted the dues i have written uncount in the bracket and count in the bracket when we are not supposed to count any particular noun we consider this some as singular some is yet to be done it is uncountable some means you want to do something you want to mention something but here it is uncountable so here it is considered singular and singular verb is written with it in the another another example some have not submitted the dues here some is countable like a few like two or three students have not submitted their dues so we can count them and here we consider it as plural i need sweets is there any are there any for example if i need one so i can call it as is there any or if it is uncountable then definitely is is used if it is countable are is used 
none has arrived yet none have arrived yet none has means like for example i am waiting for i am waiting for a few persons and anybody who hasn't arrived yet that's why it is none has arrived and then i have invited almost 10 to 20 people and they nobody has still arrived so that's why i have used have here all is well again if it is uncountable is is used all are well a lot of people are there number of persons are there so we use are here more is expected more are expected most is lost more are lost singular and plural indefinite pronouns are used according to the condition where we are supposed to use them there is a slightest difference between many and few like when we talk about many and when we talk about few what is the difference between it many means a large number of people and few means more than two but not many less than many so the difference between few and many is explained like few can be more than two people but they are not considered a large number of people but when we talk about many or about any noun so it is a large number as compared to few a pronoun that relates or refers to some noun or pronoun in a sentence is known as a relative pronoun for example who whom whose which that what these pronouns are used to introduce a relative clause when we are supposed to connect two clauses so a relative clause is started with a relative pronoun they are used to make clear what is being talked about these pronouns refer to the nouns or the pronouns about whom we are talking in a sentence they describe something more about subject or object we refer to a particular subject or object within a sentence with the help of these relative pronouns let's have a look on some examples the person who is driving the car is my brother who is underlined and it functions as relative pronoun here and it is referring to the subject that is the person it is the cat which has two kittens now which is a relative pronoun and it is used for the cat the teacher whom you talked about is my favorite teacher in this particular example whom is referring to the teacher and it functions as a relative pronoun then the boy whose mobile phone is lost is crying the place that i want to visit is very beautiful tell me what you want to say so all these underlined relative pronouns are referring to the subjects or the object within these sentences let us check out these examples that will help us to understand about the subject and object the person is driving the car the person is my brother these are two simple sentences and now we are going to make them one the person who is driving the car is my brother here this who refers to the subject that is the person another example is there i have found the pen i lost the pen i have found the pen that i lost here this that is used to refer to the object that is pen within this sentence now we'll check out about the relative pronouns and its usage who is used for people which is used for things and animals whose is used for the possessions of people or animals whom is used for people when the person is the object of the verb and that is used for the people things and animals now here i would like to mention about the difference between that and which where we should use that and where we should use which most of the time students ask this question that is used particularly in restrictive clauses and which is used in non restrictive clauses now what are these clauses inshallah i'll discuss it in my clauses topic but here i would like to give you a glimpse of these clauses with the help of certain examples the example for that is the book that she read was very useful for her literature review here this particular information 
that she read was useful it is essential for this particular sentence so we cannot remove it from this particular given sentence while on the other hand spiders which are a type of insects are usually venomous now here we know about spiders that they are a type of insects we can remove we can cut out this portion of this sentence still our meaning is clear so this is the particular usage of cat and we, we have a few compound relative pronouns whoever whosoever whichever whatsoever for example we have invited a lot of guests whosoever comes is welcome here whosoever is referring to the object of this sentence that is guests you can do whatever you want you can take whichever you like 